I hope you are ready for a very special comeback. Because today, the killer yellow box is coming in full force. This beauty right here, we used it in the death ray experiment. Basically, it's a box that has a transformer. It takes the energy from the 110 volt outlet and increases those volts a lot. We have a few thousand volts here and we'll try to measure how many volts it has later. But what happens is that when we have that much voltage, we can do some special tricks. I won't teach how to make this box as it's very dangerous. In fact, one of the experiments we're going to do is put all this energy into a piece of chicken thigh. You'll see the damage it does. The experiment we're going to do today is a classic in electricity called Jacob's Ladder or Jacob's Ladder for those who are fans of Lost. It has this name because it comes from a biblical passage where angels were going up and down a ladder to heaven. There won't be anything about angels here unless someone decides to put both hands here at the end of the machine that releases electricity. So, instead of angels, we're going to have something much cooler, which is plasma. These are rays that will keep going up our ladder non-stop. But before we start making this ladder, let's test to see if this machine is working well, like if it can electrocute things properly. You get that this is just a pretext to ultimately see how things appear when electrocuted, don't you? <laughs> LED lamp. If you can't handle it, why did you come? Shower resistor. I think the things I chose are so-so, so let's move on to the things you guys picked on our Instagram. Because we asked and you answered. First thing, gelatin. Wow. Oh, look at the hole in the gelatin, that's crazy. It smells like burnt hair, but gelatin comes from animals, right? From skin and stuff like that. Another thing they asked for was aluminum foil. Wow, look at the holes. If you can't handle it, I already said you shouldn't come. Hey. So, what do you think is going to happen to the egg? Please leave it in the comments. I have no idea. Ugh. I expected an explosion, but not that fast. Let's check the aftermath and what unfolds. While people often claim that you can fry an egg on hot asphalt or a car dashboard during a heat wave, I bet you've never seen an egg being fried by electrocution. I think that's worth a thumbs up. The last thing you guys asked for me to electrocute is a chicken drumstick. This is interesting to know what would happen if we put our hand in this thing. After all, chicken meat is more or less similar to our muscles. Before electrocuting, I'm just going to show you what safety measures I'm taking so this doesn't happen to me. But there are at least four reasons. First, I'm wearing leather gloves, which likely prevent this energy from getting through. The second thing is that these polyvinyl chloride rods don't conduct electricity. This stays away from me. The third thing is that I have a pedal down here, and the electricity only reaches the box if I press the pedal. This is the best safety measure of all, because if I get any shock, obviously I'll move away and let go of the pedal. Fourth is this lamp, which indicates the whole system is active. When lit, we must be alert. Besides all that, I also have a switch here on my pedal. Without this switch, the pedal doesn't work, and there's also a circuit breaker in the box, so if it gets too hot, it shuts off by itself. I grabbed another glove to test if leather really protects. I'll put one terminal inside the glove and turn it on. Let's see. It 
doesn't really protect that much. Out of the four things, the glove is so-so. Come on, Frango. It's definitely not very interesting to get shocked by this thing. He ate the bone, there's not much left of it. Look, it's already kind of cooked. I think it's already clear that the machine is working well, right? Let's make Jacob's ladder. Setting up this experiment is relatively simple. I'm basically gonna have two copper bars here, two rigid copper wires, and they stay very close together down here. The spark will start at their base. As this spark happens, it goes up, and this spark here is the step of the ladder. I've already bent the tip of these rods so they fit into the wood, and basically I'm gonna make a hole and then put a screw with a washer on top. In the end, I'll have the two rods standing up, and at the base, they're very close together. So that I don't have to keep holding these pipes here, I'm going to attach the wire directly to their tips. So, do you think it's going to work? One, two, three, and... Do you think it's not close enough over there? He's burning the wood underneath, but it's not making contact with the copper. Whoa, man. Let's see. All lights and power are off, circuit breaker disconnected, and I'm not touching the pedal. Ah, I had already played with this piece of wood here, making a groove using electricity. And here, since it's just carbon, the energy is already flowing. There's a piece of wood left at the bottom, but look at the rain. I'm gonna come back with about three extra kilos just from water. I will. Let's go. The worst part is I don't want to get the wood wet because then it messes up the experiment, right? It will conduct electricity if wet. Saved by Mari. This one will work. Let's go. I turned on the circuit breaker. Now I just have to press here. What am I trying to do here? To use a physics effect which has a name that's not well regarded nowadays, which is the Corona effect. The worst part is that it's had this name long before anyone knew coronavirus existed. What actually happens in practice with this Corona effect? When you have an electrical conductor, in our case a copper wire, and around it you have a fluid, in our case air. The high voltage of the wire, the many volts you have in the wire, will end up affecting the electrons in the air. And then these electrons will get kind of disorganized, and from a certain point on, the air will start to conduct electrical energy. In other words, it will become a conductor and work like a wire. At this point, we can already predict what will happen. What happened is what's happening out there, in that rain, that lightning coming down from the sky, in our case here, it's just a little smaller. Lightning is simply plasma, the fourth state of matter, alongside solid, liquid, and gas. In plasma, the electrons start to get all mixed up. They leave the atom, some enter the atom. At this point, we say that the gas is ionized because the atoms have lost or gained electrons. The plasma then becomes a good electricity conductor, which is the goal. But to be honest, I don't know if we have enough voltage here, if we have enough volts. Because I thought this machine would generate about 10 or 20,000 volts, but that's not really the case. We can measure the machine's voltage by the size of the spark, by the maximum distance we can create a spark. For the electric energy to overcome the air, we need a lot of volts. And it's harder to overcome the farther apart these two ends are. There's a number for air, it's 3,000 volts per millimeter. 
So to create a spark there that jumps one millimeter, we need 3000 volts. You can imagine that one centimeter is 30,000 volts. And if it were a meter, it would be three million volts. In our case, it's just one millimeter. So it's about 3000 volts. We would likely need more. How do I make these angels go up? I noticed others who made this ladder are using a conductive material, like a small wire, in the middle to generate the spark. I was mistakenly trying to generate the spark directly. The wire piece placed in the center will make contact and start the spark. That's what I did. I attached a piece of wire to the end of the polyvinyl chloride pipe. The polyvinyl chloride pipe is not a conductor of electricity, so I can stay far away here and generate this spark, and then, theoretically, it will work. <laughs> I think it can be improved a little bit. I can improve the curve of the five here and also turn off this air conditioner that's blowing wind and pushing the plasma, which ends up breaking the contact here. You'll only understand how this thing goes up after all. What happens here is that the plasma is hot. Atoms and molecules have electrons that move around, being lost and gained in different places. All of that is extremely hot, less dense than air, so it will rise as if it were a helium gas balloon. The plasma rises and conducts electricity effectively. So the electricity is always passing through the plasma, and the plasma keeps rising, and the electricity keeps passing through the plasma as it rises. But here I'm opening, I'm increasing the distance between the two conductors, and the plasma gets longer and longer until eventually it rises, reaches the top here, and then it goes away. And then it breaks the contact, electricity can't pass through anymore, I have to make contact at the bottom again. Guys, I adjusted the ladder, made it as high as possible, I think it's good now, it's something I'm proud to share with you. If you haven't subscribed to Manual Do Mundo yet, we always bring this kind of video here with cool explanations. You always learn something, and you also see interesting effects, enjoy the plasma. finish, there's a question I've always had. If we put something in the place where the plasma passes, will that thing catch fire? Plasma works better in fire. Look how crazy that is. If you enjoy lightning, here are two suggestions. We use this machine to draw lightning on wood. And also a very old but very useful video which is about how to protect yourself from lightning during a storm. 